Man, it's early. Whoa, Jay Glazer. Oh, man, what are you doing? You hit with the big guns. You got good news? Good news, I got the offer. How much? 23 million. 23? Yeah. Nah. Nowhere near. Need to come up. After my back-to-back -back showings on Collingwood, the hustle paid off. So our Middle Eastern family are looking for a place that they can entertain. They can have their friends from around the world come. The house is perfect, assuming we can get it for the right price. My buyer is in Saudi Arabia. At 7 a.m. in LA time, it's 5 p.m. Saudi time. Sunny. I gotta make this deal happen by the end of the day, and if that means I gotta do this before I have my first cup of coffee, bring it. Gotta get them for a minute. Make it good. Listen, this is a starting offer. We just gotta play the game with them. Once you pass that 20 million threshold, it's a lot more rare to get an offer. So any offer is something we gotta take a serious look yeah, at. Yeah, I get it, but you know? I feel like a house, is, this is one of a kind. I get it. But I don't have another offer on the table. Well, I know I can come down to 27.5. So speak to your guy and see how close we can get to that. Because at the minute, we'll just keep the house. I get it. Look, that's a super respectful counter. I'm going to call them. They just called me on the way over here. They want to know what's up. I'll get right back to you. Let me make a call. When it comes down to the psychology of a deal, a counter offer is almost more important than the initial offer. So the fact that these investors shot $3 million in at the first counter shows me that they're ready to make a deal today. I don't know what I expected, you know? Like, in New York, how it works. If you're a big agent, I fight sometimes, you know, with Ryan and Steve and, like, other top agents, and we treat each other like a group of friends, in a way. Well, first of all, I think we've only just arrived, if you think about it, put it in context. It's going to take you ages to have the same kind of friendships and business relationships that you had. It's not gonna happen overnight. I mean, you are the top of your game in New York. Now you've arrived here, you're on their turf. They maybe see you as a threat. Maybe Josh feels like that as well. On the party, he was the only one who like, took my side, actually, surprisingly, which was nice. But I have really good intentions. And I'm not here to like tell anyone that I know better. Why is it not Because working? it would, again, you're on their turf. Josh Altman isn't gonna like bless you and say, oh, welcome, you know, like take away all my business. That's really what they see it as. You know, like they've got to make space for you and it's probably very crowded for them already. I'm very small, I can fit anywhere. Well, Look you... Look at me. You... <laughs> yes. Good morning. Hey, how are you? I'm so glad to see you. Mwah. Thank you so much for coming over. How are you? Look how okay. cute you look. Thank you, darling. It's a pleasure to see you. Are you L.A. or New York this week? This Well, I'm here in L.A. Well, I didn't know. You might have just hopped on the red eye to come say hi. I did. I came right in just to show you the house. You're adorable. This is beautiful. I have known Nikki for a few years. We met originally at a Project Angel food charity event. I came to the event with Charo and Cheryl Teagues because I just don't have friends my own age. My friends have owned this house for about 14 years now. Right, I remember when they bought it. They asked me who I thought should sell the house, and of course I said Josh Vlad. I like that. Come on in. All right, I'll let's do this. Thing. You know, I've never been inside this house. I've always been interested in it. I'm assuming this house was built in like the, probably 1928. 1928, which is good because the market crashed in 29 and things that were under construction, they just cut costs everywhere. Did they really? Yeah, they didn't cut any costs with this house. No, you can tell. Well, Wallace Neff was one of the best architects. He's I remember- very affluent. He's, he did a lot of homes, but this is considered to be one of his very best. They had a lot of people that lived here, you know, uh, Peter Bogdanovich right. lived here. Richard Brooks. And Richard Brooks, who was a very, very famous director. I know. Canton Hot Tin Roof. Diane Keaton owned exactly. this house. Orson Welles lived here also. But Orson Welles lived here with Peter Bogdanovich. Because he went broke. Right. And so he... Yeah. Now I know we're in a Diane Keaton home because this is her signature thing, the tile work. And look at the fireplace and everything. They, they, they kept the tiles which I think are so gorgeous over here. Come on in, I'll show you the sure, kitchen. Nikki, you would have been a great real estate agent. I actually was a real estate. I started off as a real estate agent. I thought you were a stockbroker. I, then I was a stockbroker. <laughs> then you were I a fireman. A, <laughs> then I had a television show. Fasten your jet set seatbelts. It's the Nikki Haskell Show, direct from New York. 
Nikki's interviewed every celebrity in the world from singers like Pat Boone to dictators like Imelda Marcos. Okay, so we have, this is very cool. It's very industrial. Yes, I love this. this and is I like the 1920s hanging chandeliers. Wow, look at this. You know what, this is like a ballroom. This is a gorgeous space. This is amazing. They have this in Santa Barbara at the Biltmore. Nobody does these kinds of things. Look at the thickness of this wall, look. Most walls today are this thick. And there's a bathroom in here. I love this. Isn't this divine? This is just perfect right out of the 1920s. I love it. So this house has nine bathrooms. Oh, that's all? This is the office over here. And an art studio in here. It's got great light in here. Oh, wow. And Peter Bogdanovich did this. This was a screening room at one time. Oh, OK. So now he did that, and now the owner converted it into an right. art studio. Well, the state, no, the screen would be that way, right? Right, yes. But I'm saying they had up the, you could sit up here, and then it was all over right, there. Right, right, right. This is a lovely bedroom. This is so pretty. It really looks like the Biltmore or something. It you does. Know. It really does. You want to go upstairs? Yeah. You want to... OK. My fearless leader. I could only walk up like this. I have a broken knee. You broke your knee? With just about. <laughs> Too much dancing at Studio 54. Yeah, I believe it. My feet have been stepped on by every drag queen in the 80s. <laughs>